So the next presenter is Amanda Serena Fernandez. Uh, I, I always think about this middle name is actually incredible. Like, how did that come to be? We, we need somebody needs to investigate this uh, uh, genealogy of the, this middle name. Uh, Amanda is actually specializing in Nishitani, and uh, you've been working on Nishitani since master's degree. Yeah. And then she's working on a PhD at the University of Pompabra in Barcelona. She helped us organize the first conference uh, big time. Now she's giving a talk on Nishitani. Please, Amanda. Thank you. Actually, I'm very nervous being uh, talking about my thesis in front of you. <laughs> but, uh, so if you, you can understand me if I'm shaking or... <laughs> um, but uh, it's a great opportunity to be here. So... Um, I'm working, uh, my working is about Nishitani scripts of the, uh, the Cartesian Cogito. And uh, first of all, I just started to write, and uh, I'm in the beginning of my, of my work. And uh, um, my thesis is about Nishitani scripts uh, of, of the Cartesian Cogito, and uh, how it could be seen not only as an epistemological issue, but uh, as an ontological one with a religious response that would, would challenge the metaphysical basis of the West philosophy, Western tradition. So uh, in this presentation, I would like to expose some points of Nishitani criticism uh, that would help to understand my, my contribution. So uh, to Nishitani's philosophical project to overcome nihilism and think the reality with great influence of the Buddhist religion and interest in dialogue with the West is important for him uh, to analyze the cogito, which is uh, responsible for the knowledge. So to understand the reality, we need to know the self. Uh, so uh, as, with, uh, as I said before, beyond the epistemological side, um, uh, Nishitani sees the subjectivity uh, in the Cartesian cogito as an ontological issue, which is uh, related to the fact that the ontology traditional wasn't able to think the reality, taking consideration the nothingness in a radical way. So, um, so talking about the, cog the Cartesian cogito, it's also important uh, for Nishitani. Uh, because uh, he he understands that uh, the cogito is our today way of being. Um, so uh, when we analyze the cogito, we analyze our present uh, subjectivity, our current way of living. So I quote him: uh, "The self of the of contemporary man is an ego." of the Cartesian type constituted self-consciously as something standing over against the world and all things that are in it. So Nishitani takes as evident um, that the model of man that we, we are today is the same that was conceptualized by Descartes in the modern era. Uh, but uh, what model, model of man is that which stands over against the world uh, uh, that he's saying? So, um, I quote him, um, to look uh, at things from the standpoint of the self is always to see things merely as objects. This standpoint of separation of subject and object or op opposition between within and without is what we call the field of consciousness. And uh, it is from this field that we ordinarily relate to things by means of concept and representation. So, according to Nishitani, by setting up the dualism between res cogitans, which substance is thought or consciousness, and rex extensa, which substance is a physical extension, uh, Descartes creates a wall that separates uh, subject and object, man and world. Uh, he puts the man in a prominent position with uh, respect to the other things, creating a relation of power called by Nishitani as the field of consciousness, in which the man is the subject of knowledge responsible for analyzing the world by concept and representation. Uh, for Nishitani, the field of consciousness is problematical because in that epistemological perspective, it's not possible to be in touch uh, with reality in itself since the self occupies the central stage. 
uh, he says, within, within it, reality appears only in the shape of shattered fragments, only the shape of ine ineluctable self-contradictions. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm quoting uh, all the, the, the quotation is from religion, nothing else. Um, so, um, uh, disconception uh, of self-centered man called by Nishitani as an egocentric, egocentric way of being that character characterize the isolation of the modern man has another important consequence, a mechanicist, uh, mechanicistic view of the world. Here, the world uh, is objectified, conceived ultimately as raw material, as a tool to be exploited by the individual which has the cognitive capacity. capacity. So Nishitani has a very hard judgment about it, about such a uh, mechanical view of the world. Yes, for him, it's important because uh, it opens the way for the control of the nature by scientific technology. But he says, and I'm quoting, uh, by welding his great power and authority is controlling the natural world, man came to surround himself with a cold, lifeless world. Inevitably, each individual ego became like a lonely but well-fortified island flo floating on a sea of that matter. Yeah. <laughs> um, so for him, the things as objects uh, are not alive because even, he says, even animals and body of man himself were taught as mechanisms. Uh, another problem is uh, the structure of the, the, the cult itself. Uh, Rugly speaking, in meditation, Descartes found, found out uh, the existence of the cult or the self, or as called by Nishitani by the Latin term, the ego. Yeah, that's a, a problem to analyze why he, he referred to the cult as an ego. Uh, but um, continue. In implying that uh, if one is questioning, thinking, cogitating, one must exist. So, cogito, uh, uh, cogito ergo sum is the first true that survives the hyperbolical doubt. But Nishitani questions the validity of the cogit itself. He says, uh, Descartes, uh, he, he's referring to Descartes, was satisfied uh, with thinking about the cogit from the standpoint of the cogit itself. But there, in fact, a difficulty here. For all its self-evidence, does the cogit really give us an adequate standpoint from which to think about the cogit itself? Uh, does not that very self-evidence need to be brought out into, a, into the open at a more elemental level? So if we, we agree with him that uh, it's a problem to fix the reality by concept and representation, would be a problem to fix the self, the, the cult, by that perspective. So uh, the field of consciousness, uh, the abuses provoked uh, by the modern dualism uh, that, in the end, provoked the questionable uh, mechanical way to deal with the world. The, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm remembered uh, has a conference about how to deal with nature and, uh, in an ethical way. Um, so the nature of the cogito itself are the reasons why the modern concept of cogito is problematical and why it would be problematical it's not overcoming. Uh, so uh, how to do it, how to overcome this perspective that for Einstein is uh, our way of living um, and how to overcome all these problems that uh, be it's, begin his its beginning is uh, the concept, uh, this concept of um, self. Uh, and Einstein says that we need to pass through the field of consciousness to give us a new perspective. So he says, I want to turn to the ground of subjectivity of the cogito and there to consider its origin from a point at which the orientation of the subject to its ground is more radical and true going than it is with the cogito. So we must analyze the nature of the self in a more elemental way than the cogito. We need to rethink what it is behind the self because only by knowing ourselves, our, our, ourselves it's possible to know the world. Yes, yeah, to know the world, because for Nishitani, um, we can 
know by concept and representation, we can use that uh, way to understand the world. So understanding, knowing is not knowing, but um, I can't go into that. Um, so the search for the, an elemental subjectivity, we need to rethink the substance of man. So um, I, I'm quoting Nishitani. The, the Cartesian cogito ergo sum can secure its own truth uh, only when the field of self-consciousness breaks open to the more elemental field of the elemental self. Where it does not uh, take place, the self of that self-consciousness comes eventually to be a falsehood and a delusion unto itself. So for Nishitani, all problems that we mentioned before uh, are caused by an analysis of the substance of the man that's not radical or elemental enough because the importance of emptiness is in its basis uh, was not taught in death. So we need to rethink the substance of man. For Nishitani, the concept of substance demands the, the, the role of a subject uh, to know the things as objects of understanding by representation. Uh, he says, uh, the concept of substance points to, to what which makes a thing to be what it is and makes it preserve its self-identity in spite of incessant changes that occur in, the, in its various accidental properties. Now, being is looked upon as substance because beings are looked upon as objects and thus also conversely because being set before the subject representationally are viewed from the subject point of view. So he's criticizing uh, that um, we are always using our consciousness, our point of view to see the thing. We are not uh, letting the thing uh, show itself. So uh, when we, when the man look for the substance as ultimate fundamental of reality, he's reproducing the Cartesian dualistic logic. Uh, yeah, and I see that in, in that, uh, that uh, phrase uh, a problem because if, uh, if you think like that, that uh, when we think uh, the reality as substance, we are using the dualistic, um, the dualistic perspective that in, in Descartes, it's a, a little bit, um, there's a chronological problem because the concept of substance is from the Greeks, right? So, um, yeah, that's a, a problem to, to think about it. Um, so the critics to the traditional ontology. Uh, because of that search for the substance of things from the standpoint of reason that represents the traditional ontology, Nishten criticizes it. Uh, Nishten says, traditional ontology was incapable of descending to the kind of field, field where questioner and questioned are both transformed into a single great question mark. So that nothing is present save one great question to the kind of field that may be referred uh, to as the self-presentation of the great out. Ontology needs to pass through nihility and shift to an entirely new field. But uh, which is this new field capable of solving the problems posed by modernity, by giving the man the encounter with his true self and the reality in its truth? Uh, beyond concept uh, as consciousness and substance. It's possible to think that way. It's possible to think in a world without that, that concept, uh, that these concepts. Uh, we can, uh, how can we achieve the great doubt where the subject and its relation with the world are questioned? For Nishitani, the response is in the religion point of view. So, uh, and this response in the religion point of view depends on an existential experience, experience of man that cannot be the Cartesian cogito. Religion is taken as a way of living that is the awaken to an elemental subjectivity as well as a self-awareness of reality. 
He says, I should like instead to approach religion from a somewhat different angle as the self-awareness of reality or more correctly, the self, the real self-awareness of reality. So, uh, Nishitani, uh, he, he sees the religion not as a transcendental uh, perspective, as the opposite, he's thinking religion as a, a search for what you are, what is more elemental about you and uh, about the world. Um, the Nishitani conception of religion is based, is based on Mahayana Buddhist traditional elements that for him carry the necessary components for, us, for a solution of the modern problems. For Nishitani, the nature of the religion experience is capable of putting the uncertainty of the human existence, the dualistic nature of the reality, the ego, death and life as elemental questions. So this great doubt is not an expression of the subject that questions in the representative way, like the Cartesian doubt. It appears when one uh, realizes the presence of death and nihility at the foundation of one existence. By that, uh, the ego becomes the nihility, breaking through the field of consciousness. Only the self that overcomes the nihility can see the emptiness in the bottom of everything and uh, be in its true and elemental nature of the original self. So the field of emptiness is the absolute near side where everything is in, 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 is in its home ground. Uh, Nishitani says that uh, this is the great affirmation. So uh, we need to abandon um, the egocentric way of being by questioning our reality and overcome the nihility that appears to be in that ap that appears to be in our home ground. Um, so uh, emptiness is the great affirmation. So uh, the encounter with the standpoint of emptiness happens for Nishitani in three stages. So we're talking about an existential experience that uh, at first, the first step is when we experience some challenging situations that make us question, question our existence and the meaning of reality. Second, when we choose go into the doubt and everything comes in a big question mark, we face the, ne the nihility, the negativity that is behind the reality in the realization of nihility. Consciousness, world, substance are negated, are falsified because the basis that they are standing are nullified. Then we need to overcome the nihility to reestablish re 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 uh, re uh, our sense of reality in the standpoint of emptiness. Uh, this is the third and last stage. So, Ms. Chani says, the standpoint of sunyata can, can be translated as um, emptiness. It is not a standpoint that only states that the self and things are empty. The foundation of the standpoint of sunyata lie as well. Not that self is empty, but that emptiness is the self. Not that things are empty, but that emptiness is, thing, is things. Uh, this is the difference between nihility. Yeah, I'm finishing. Uh, this is the difference between nihility and emptiness. Uh, in nihility, everything uh, 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 are empty. How can I say? Are negated, are... He's called like a, um, a nothingness, um, like, a, yeah, I can't can say it in English. So uh, for concluding, the conclusion is that, that Nishitani develops a philosophical construction that see religion as a necessary hum human experience that make, make us question our life, the reality, our true self, the, and show us a way out the problems of the substantialization of the egocentric self, 
symbol of modernity, founding our true self. We can overcome the substantial perspective of the subject and see the world in its true realization. As we said before, only after uh, discovering the self, we can know, know the reality, know unknowing. <laughs> so um, our conclusion is that uh, to overcome the modern point uh, of view, it's necessary a new cosmovision that for Einstein, everything's linked. It's, uh, he's called circumstantial perspective, and uh, it, it's, we need a different uh, human being that can be the cogito. Uh, and uh, the criticism of the cogito is in fact a criticism of the ontological tradition, because the problem is not um, uh, the epistemological perspective is not only that we see the world by uh, concept and representation, the problem in fact is our substance, what kind of self we are. Uh, defending the perspective that reality is positioned in other bases which do not exclude emptiness, Nishitani contributes to overcome the substantial, substantial, uh, substantiality perspective defended by Descartes with the conception of rex cogitans. In this way, the realization of emptiness as a non-substantial uh, nature of all things which cannot be objectified or rationalized has its importance to give us a different point of view capable of overcoming all problems of the ontological West traditional by bringing the nothingness as a relevant problem to be discussed. That's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amanda. Uh, 10 minutes for questions, please. <laughs> Hi, thank you very much for your talk, Chris. And uh, I would like to um, uh, ask two questions about your last two points in the conclusion. Um, first, this idea that we have to um, overcome the self-centeredness of uh, the subject, this uh, modern point of view. Um, I, I, I find it very interesting because also like uh, the whole contemporary philosophy in the Western tradition has criticized this very yeah, point. Yeah. And I'm wondering if it's not like a little bit up, up, updated at this point because the way um, the subject works nowadays, that my feeling is, is more of a, of a kind of network um, uh, subject where uh, the subject has the idea that it's a substance. Uh, it, like we think we uh, are the center of everything, but we actually are in, like for instance, social networks or also like uh, uh, profiles in the uh, rationalized uh, uh, system administration, etc. We are actually a part of a very big uh, network that I would call something like a postmodern uh, view of the of the subject more than a modern one. Maybe. Um, Nishitani's uh, point uh, would be uh, because of this we need uh, uh, some other model. Uh, maybe you can comment on that. And my second question would be um, about the idea of the religion over for like as a solution for overcoming ontology. Um, I, I, in a sense, I, I kind of find like the idea of religion um, maybe because because uh, Nishitani comes from a, from a Eastern uh, culture and uh, religion doesn't have this transcendent element you have common. Uh, first, it's not that bad in that sense because we don't fall into an old-fashioned ontology, pre-modern, etc. But um, in, in, in the Western cultures, for instance, we have uh, Levinas, who has also tried to overcome ontology through a different perspective, uh, but he points more towards ethics, like to the idea of the human being uh, as connected to other subjects. Uh, maybe is, is, is that more or less like the direction uh, that she wants to go? Yeah, uh, I think that um, uh, Nishitani, it's because we are talking uh, earlier that uh, when you are talking about Nishitani, you, you, I, I, I have that feeling that we, we, ha we have to talk about everything, like uh, the concept of uh, that reality ha has no basis, like he's saying, the emptiness in the world. Uh, it's only possible the way that uh, I, I see by um, his concept of circumstantial reality. So uh, everything is empty, is empty, but uh, we are connected with everything. Uh, so in that way, it's similar that we are talking. So yeah, I think that it is. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Ah, the, the other point, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the, that uh, modernity is already, um, we are talking about that for a long time. There is a lot of uh, great philosophers in the West talking about uh, uh, overcoming um, Descartes, right? The, the Cartesian cogito. But uh, for Nishitani, this is, uh, this is important to talk today because for him, uh, as I said, a way of living the world is that uh, is that is is based on that perspective, that dualistic way of being in the world. So um, yeah, I think it's that. Yeah. Sorry, just related to both of your your comments about the importance about the kind of use of this matter and how important they might be nowadays. So in a sense, I think it's quite uh, important because they really predated many of the uh, like the postmodern developments of the West, and they went in kind of somewhat of a, uh, its own direction. So it's kind of in, uh, interesting to reflect on the uh, similarities and differences between postmodernism and mission views. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm really happy with um, the big context in which you are dealing with the cogito, this whole ontological question, much bigger question. So I have, um, I have a couple of questions that, that I've never answered because they seem pedantic. They seem? They seem pedantic. They seem um, uh, just too academic, too abstract, too disconnected. But maybe you could answer them in the context, not today, but in the context of what you're doing. Here's the first problem. That you, you mentioned something in passing quickly, and uh, so you see the same problem. That to say that Cartesian ego is an anachronism, because the idea of the ego only appears in Descartes as a pronoun. Yeah, yeah. It never appears as a noun, a substantive. Okay. So the question is does this really clarify the interpretation of Descartes? philosophy or does it add something that distorts it? The idea of the ego, it appears once in Kant, as far as I know, where he says something like das ich, das ich denke. That's all. But the real concept of the ego only comes with Fichte, where it's really, really clarified. Before that it would have sounded very funny, like to us to say the she or the them or something. You know? mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a bit of an anachronism. Does it add or subtract to what Descartes actually said? Then, the second problem is, he makes a jump from the Descartes, the Cartesian ego to speak of dualism, as we all do, post-Cartesian dualism. Yeah. <clears throat> dualism doesn't need an ego. The separation between mind and world is as old as, as Plato in the world of appearances. It doesn't need a concept of an ego. And the concept of mind there's no reason to narrow it down to ego. It includes imagination, it includes feelings, it includes many other things than the, what we call the psychological ego. So, mind is not just cogito. So, now that, that brings us to the, logically what's happening. So if you say dualism is Descartes' separation of subject and object. Mm -hmm. okay? And the subject is the subject who thinks. And the thinking subject is the ego. Therefore, if I can um, disprove the ego, I've disproved dualism. Huh? But each of the steps along the way has to be examined because I'm not quite sure those equals are correct. Yeah. Yeah. You don't destroy dualism by destroying a Descartian ego that didn't exist in Descartes. Huh? No? So I think. It's the same thing he's asking, but maybe just in more rigorously. And as I said, it's pedantic, unless you put it in a bigger problem and have some reason to go through this whole process. So really complicated. <laughs> yeah, I. So I think it's, it's, you can start. Yeah, you can. Start I, I can. Uh, I can. What I can say about uh, why he chose uh, the word ego, for me, is like uh, he's thinking not uh, in a. Um, psychological way but uh he's thinking uh about uh the the buddhist tradition so uh when i the way that i think is like uh when he he chose to to say muga a non-ego 
Um, um, let me think about it. <laughs> so if he says that the Cartesian ego is saying Kant's idea of a Buddhist concept? No. <laughs> what I, I mean is that uh, he no, he's mean, trying to. Up, yeah, I'm I'm trying to to speak uh, like yeah, it's yeah. it's hard to speak in English <laughs> because I'm usually thinking another language, but uh, he's proposed is to overcome uh, a concept, uh, the, the, the cogito. So this overcoming is the, the muga, the anatma. The, so uh, I think that uh, he chose to, to say that cogito is ego because he is using uh, Buddhist terms. So I, I, I'm clean. I'm, I don't Actually, know. <laughs> I, I think I'm in, in line with some of the argument because Tanabe gives the almost exactly the same critique of Kurt, uh, Descartes and, and Metanoides. And you can argue that this cogito and ego is not from Descartes, so that he talks about the Cartesian skepticism and not radical enough. Right? Descartes never said, I'm just going to do ontological skepticism. He just said, I'm just working on this epistemological problem. But Tanabe went so far as to say, this is not radical enough because it's not touching on ontology. So you could argue that, well, Descartes really didn't mean to do what we actually attributing him, yeah. but I think he initiated the, the whole setup that he had this sort of res, res extended and, and mind and, and being, just initiated the whole modernity problem that, from him. Uh, so like the whole concept of uh, auto, you know, the cogito and auto, now we have the religious traditions that talk about heteros and you know uh, action rather than thinking. So I think maybe he's just not saying that this is Cartesian problem, but it started out with Cartesian framework of thinking that initiated. Uh, okay, Yeah, but if you say it's French, uh, I think initially Charlie would have needed a more minute account of how this. Involved. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, okay. uh, I think Jim's uh, comment is really inhuman. It begins with Plato. Uh, yeah. And I think he would be better off if he would have a, a, a chart that somewhat like with this mm -hmm. history of playing. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to say that this is convincing. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's convincing at all. Sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think. For Nishi Chan to make his, uh, his point of view, his criticism of modernity, mm -hmm. more to the point, I, see. I think he would have needed such a narrative. I don't see. think that it does, does yeah. solve anything at all, um, but uh, he would have needed it to make his point stronger than it is here. Maybe two, two, two more comments yeah. and then he can respond. John? Yeah, so. Um, my comments are following in the same line. But I don't know uh, for whom you are writing your dissertation, but if there are Descartes scholars on your board, I don't think that Nishitani's critique is going to be very convincing. Um, and it's not just because, you know, in post-modernity we're over Descartes or something like that, but because there are some very illuminating reinterpretations of Descartes. Which uh, for, yeah. for where you might actually find some some common points, some congruences with Nishitani. I'm uh, thinking, for example, of Levinas. Uh, there are some other lesser known people who and they don't deal with the the dualism of mind and world or body and soul or something like this. But they they understand the cogito as um, displaying a kind of immediacy with, with uh, oneself, okay, that is not an ego-self, and, an and a dis they display an immediacy of um, what they, they call being, okay, the immediacy of being that comes about through the cogito. So the cogito is precisely that by which things show themselves in this interpretation. <coughs> And um, I don't know if it's convincing to all Descartes scholars, but 
It's, uh, it's completely different reading than Nishitani gives. It's almost as if Nishitani out of Ogatanabe make a straw man out of Descartes, you know, so they invent a kind of Dick, oversimplified Descartes and for their purposes and then criticize him. Rebecca, do you have something to add? Uh, I, I, was, I was thinking in the sense of the collective and that it's very important to have, in, to have the critic of Heidegger to metaphysics. O sea, the, the, the beings, no? the, the, the idea of the science, beings, uh -huh, because all the history of the metaphysics is thinking in beings. No? Yeah. For, for Michitani is substance, no? form. No? And, and, but in which sense is particularly, no? the, the case of Michitani to think in substance, and because she has the tradition of Prajna Paramitas, no? to question the, the, the things, the forms, the, no? And I, I think that they are the two are pointing to something that is very important, no? We are thinking in objects, we are thinking in scientists, we are thinking uh, uh, in representation, <laughs> no? The things are separated between them and, and they determine our lives, no? Yeah. And, and I think that, that uh, the Heidegger in, 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 uh, says that, Representation is modernity. Is the, yeah. the, 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 the category of modernity, no? And well, I think that it, it is important that why, why Nishitani selects substance, no? From all the categories, no? Mm -hmm. So briefly, as many responses as you can make. <laughs> right now, yeah. I'm. Right now, I'm just with questions in my mind. I don't have any responses. <laughs> so. I just got one chapter to write on your dissertation on the, on the whole cogito problem. But yeah. Um, would you like to say something to some some of them? One response. Um, yeah, I I think that Nishitani. Uh, what Einstein has in mind when he's think, uh, talking about Descartes, I, I, I feel like he's a, a little bit uh, Heideggerian, but um, I don't know, we have some... Um, in Nishitani too? No, Nishida too? No, perdón, Nishida is... In Nietzsche too, yeah. uh, there is a, a, a critical to, 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 to Descartes. Yeah. Very important, I think. Would be interesting. Yeah, we were talking about that uh -huh. uh, the the influence of mm -hmm. Nietzsche or Heidegger or both because uh, in Nietzsche thought because uh, Nietzsche doesn't uh, speak that he he's talking um, in um, like um, he he uh, he has the influence that influence so he, he don't say cl clearly. Mm -hmm. Maybe because he, he, he studied with Heidegger, I don't know, but uh, yeah, I think that there is some relations to make, yeah, and think that, uh, I don't know, problematize that, that point of view uh, that he's saying, we are, uh, we are that kind of subject right now, we are the, the Cartesian cogito, but we are, why? So uh, yeah, we need, I need to, to problematize. Uh, like um, uh, yeah okay <laughs> thank you so much Amanda uh, before we close uh, sorry yeah well before I close I would like to notify that there was actually Cartesian group funding us for this conference and panel A was Japanese reception or Cartesian philosophy and we actually funded by Cartesian scholars so maybe we can bring the questions to the actual Cartesians and ask them about this whole thing thank you so much Amanda